Yo, what is up everybody and welcome back to another NBA 2K15 My Career Game. We just got stripped by Paul George, but we're coming off a pretty nice high. The last game we played, we made an incredible comeback. Kobe Bryant hit the game-winning jumper with about 20 seconds left and then fended off Dwayne Wade's attempt to get in the buzzer beater. As we get the steal here, we're going to lob it up to Stokes. Who, by the way, is a real player. I said in the first game I played with the Nets, Stokes was a made-up player. Apparently, he plays for the Grizzlies, so my bad on that. So, we just lobbed it up to a real player. And now, we're going to try to lob it up to a real player again. Except this time, it's Brooke Lopez. And Brooke doesn't have that kind of powerful dunk game. So, he's just going to lay it up. That's fine with me, as long as we get the two points. Even though I could have gotten it myself, you know, might as well try to get Brooke Lopez going. Because then, he'll give me a touch. That's just the way it works. You know, you give someone a touch, and all of a sudden, they don't feel reluctant to give you back the ball. Like, right here, Brooke Lopez gives it to Tice, open it from the free throw line, and Denny Tice is able to bounce it in. And we're going against Paul George, who is my 2K15 rival. You have, like, between, I think, Durant, um, Anthony Davis, and Paul George. One of the three becomes your rival throughout your career. Besides Dante Exum and um, Paul George is mine. And Darren Williams, no matter what point of his career he's at, probably will not be able to get that lob. So, lesson learned on that one. That was a well-deserved turnover, and that was a well-deserved three-point bucket right there perfect release from Denny Tice as we go to the bench so obviously we want to win this game at Bankers Fieldhouse you know against Paul George but PG-13 has got game <laughs> he's got game he's playing healthier than ever in 2k he seems to make you know damn near everything you see Kobe Bryant missing the open shot right there Kobe off to a little bit of a slow start if anybody deserves to get out to a slow start in this game it is Kobe Bryant obviously as you see we find Joe Johnson we're running plays by the way I'm gonna get into that in a sec you see Joe Johnson knock down the jumper right there is Kobe Bryant fading away gets it to go but he falls down to the ground and Kobe's clutching his knee needs to be carried by Joe Johnson and Denny Tice off the court and this is not the sight we need to see Kobe Bryant down at 37 years old you don't want to see him hit the deck like that and hold his knee because it's hard to recover from injuries like that and after the game we did learn that Kobe has a torn MCL out for two to four months so there's gonna be no kobe for a while and that is very sad this is the third game i've ever gotten to play with kobe and we didn't even get to finish the third game i was having so much fun with kobe and just like that poof no more kobe Bryant. so um we're gonna have to um at least we have a guard heavy team that's the good thing we i kind of complained about our guard depth well, um, like too much death, but now it's coming in handy because we have Joe Johnson, we have Brandon Jennings, and we have Darren Williams all ready to help, you know, um, like by committee to help come um, get home with all the points that Kobe Bryant was able to deliver. Kobe put up 34 the last game he played, so we need a committee of three to put up those kind of numbers. Joe Johnson has been, you know, hot and cold. Darren Williams, we haven't seen too much of him, and Denny Tice dunking it all over Paul George right there and of course you know with Kobe out I'm probably not to increase my scoring load a little bit too because it's hard to expect guys like Darren Williams to just put up crazy numbers that they haven't put up in years or Brandon James who's never really put up crazy numbers as you see we give it to Darren Williams and Darren Williams might be ready to go to task right here as you see Darren Williams knocking down the three-pointer it's a tight game right now and you know they gotta give respect to the Pacers they are a good team they have you know George Hill who is not a great point guard but you know he's a decent starting point guard of course paul george the superstar david west is still with the team is pg-13 with the post move not able to get to go and then roy hibbert's in the paint and whoever that was they got the and one dunk right there so we are running plays like i said um i mean i figured you know why not let me try to run some plays the one thing i realized i don't think you can call your own plays in my career as brandon jennings goes over the alley oop right there if you can call your all play your own plays in my career I don't know how to do it. They just give you a play and you got to run it or you can change the play if you want. And Stokes misses the dunk right there. Real or not, that was a pretty half-assed attempt at dunking the ball right there. As Brandon Jennings knocks it down off the double team. Definitely like seeing that. Definitely like seeing people contribute. But I don't like seeing Paul George bang on my teammates right there. As we get the pump fake. Crafty game from Denny Tice. Denny's definitely got a crafty game where you give him, you know, a little step back. You give him the pump fake, you know. And then occasional drive to the rim and stuff like that. Always trying to outsmart the opponent. And that's part of the game. That's how guys like Manu Ginobili survive. Now, Isaac might be the most athletic guy out there. But, you know, just being crafty. James Harden's another guy that obviously comes to mind. A guy that almost and maybe could have. You have an argument that could have won the um, league MVP this year. But right now, we're focused on the fourth quarter of this game. So, I'll probably cancel out some of these plays. But I'll stick with them. You know, why not? See if they work. As you see, we go to the rim against Nate Robinson. Using Nate's size against him. There's not many point guards that I'm 
become bigger than Nate Robinson is one of them is Robinson fading away good defense by Tice to contest it we went to the bench for quite a bit of the fourth quarter I don't know why but the deficit did not shrink so too much so that's all right see Stokes somehow turned over that was an easy layup but Stokes just straight up drops the ball and the pace is a chance to take the lead Robinson trying to put the moves on but he loses the ball Stokes gets it and gives it to Tice and then he Tice over Xavier Henry gives his team the lead dunking it crowd just a little bit nervous right now they're gonna be a little bit more nervous after david west turns it over again stokes getting it denny tice double team finding brandon jennings and jennings again off a double team knocking that one may be the dagger but it's too early to say that because xavier henry quickly gets a two for one and now the pacers get a stop they're very much in this game but of course they have to get the stop or they can just get the steal paul george can't tie the game offensive rebound by henry david west top of the key henry attacking the rim trying to tie the game up Problem, we got foul, but no foul call is called. Denny Tice gets the rebound. Henry on the ground, and now Denny Tice out raising Nate Robinson and slamming it, cocking it back with one hand. Denny Tice to the rim, and that may just be the dagger. Interesting ending here. Pacers had a chance to tie the game. Somehow couldn't Nate Robinson get a two-pointer, which we're okay with giving up because we can just go to the free throw line and ice the game with two free throws. Get the first one to go there. Second one definitely will end the game with the Pacers having no timeouts and the second one goes down and we're actually gonna get a steal right here that definitely solidifies the win but yeah uh, we definitely got away with one right there because Xavier Henry definitely got fouled but it's all good we'll take the win so leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it subscribe for more NBA 2k15 micro games life without Kobe begins today we'll see how we survive hopefully we can just you know make the playoffs that's the goal and I'll catch you guys next time but not before showing you a nice little press conference yes uh, Mr. Nelson what's your question you had a tough time taking care of the ball tonight. Why? There's actually no excuse. I have to be more deliberate with the ball. Whenever you get careless with the ball in this league, teams will make you pay. And that's what happened tonight. I got to be more careful. Okay, let's go over to the man on the aisle. What's your question? When you score like you did tonight, do you feel like you could go one on five and still get yours? Print that. Okay, uh, you there. Enough about the team. Let's talk about the personal rivalry that occupies so much of your thoughts lately. Is it a distraction to the team? What are you talking about? I'm talking about two of the biggest players in the league letting a personal battle supersede the needs of their respective teams. Isn't that wrong? I'm motivated every single night, all right? I'm a baller straight from the streets, but you might not know nothing about that. And in the streets, you don't get respect. You earn it, and I'm out there earning respect every single night. And if it means being motivated by battling another big dog, then so be it. Even if the team suffers? Team suffers? Man, the team ain't suffering nothing. Not as long as I'm motivated. Are you watching or not? And that's all we have for tonight, guys. Until next time.